Uh, so Auslan, Australian Sign Language, is not the same as English. And I think that's a big misconception uh, in the popular culture. Uh, the grammar is very, very different. It's a three-dimensional um, three spatial language as opposed to spoken English, which is lineal. Um, many deaf people, as a result, don't always read and write English very well. And the reason being is that they don't have phonics to aid them with spelling of individual words. And because they're not hearing English grammar spoken on a day-to-day -day basis in the way that we are, the grammar of English isn't being reinforced. So sometimes the terminology used in a medical setting is quite complex, and a lot of those terms in the written form aren't recognised by deaf people. So it should always be remembered not to assume that uh, writing with a deaf person is the next best option because for many, written English is a second language and many are not fluent. And I think that occurs very differently from other spoken languages. So if you walk into a hospital and you're speaking a foreign language and you're not speaking any English at all, then that generally prompts the professional in the setting to get an interpreter immediately because there's no communication actually occurring. Whereas if a deaf person walks in, the first thing to do is to start writing or to ask the person if they can lip read. So I wouldn't assume that writing is a, an accurate form. And I don't know that I'd always be asking a deaf person if they can lip read as well. In the same way we don't ask people in a wheelchair if they can hobble for want of a better explanation. So it should never be assumed. So there is the Queensland Language Services Policy, which states that all services funded by the Queensland Government are to provide interpreters, including Auslan interpreters, and that should always be adhered to. Uh, often there's a reliance on family members to interpret, and that should never be done uh, for varied reasons. One, family members aren't always fluent in Auslan. They don't have the skill set and understand the ethics of interpreting. They may be biased. They may have a hidden agenda. They might be in an emotional state that they don't have the capacity to actually interpret. Um, they may not remain impartial. They may not wish to interpret. And the deaf person may not want their family member to interpret. I know I wouldn't want my mother or my father or my brother interpreting for me in a hospital situation, particularly if the matter was quite private and personal. Children should never be used to interpret, and we do see this sometimes where children are relied on, and I imagine that's because here comes a deaf person, we can't communicate with them, all of a sudden the 10-year-old son we discover is hearing and that they are, are able to communicate with their parents in Auslan, so we'll get them to ask a series of questions. A 10-year-old doesn't have the capacity to be interpreting and shouldn't have to, and that scenario can be quite traumatic. And I often see when I arrive in settings where there are hear hearing children with deaf parents and they see me walk into the room and I see on their face the look of relief because they know that they're no longer obligated or made responsible to solve the situation and that there is an adult who is a professional with the skill sets there to actually facilitate the communication so that everyone walks away with clarity. One, to have the terminology and the fluency in both languages to be able to interpret that information is huge. And two, to be actually hearing that information before your parent does is quite devastating as well. And sometimes we see that of um, hearing children of deaf parents, that they are the first point of call when they shouldn't be. I did a research paper in 2014 where it was found, I interviewed a group of deaf people from across various regions, including Brisbane, who accessed three different hospitals and it was found that 70% of the time deaf, deaf patients hadn't been afforded an interpreter in those situations. And there was one scenario where a mother had been diagnosed with terminal cancer and her 17-year-old son was often expected to interpret and to the point where the mother said, I told him to leave because I could see he was getting upset. When a professional interpreter was engaged, that the doctors realised how much easier it was and how appropriate it was, and the deaf person reiterated that to them, and they all couldn't agree more. And from that point on, interpreters were engaged more regularly because it makes the health professional's job easier. 
interpreters adhere to a, a very strict code of ethics and guidelines and they are always to remain impartial. The only time an interpreter really speaks for themselves is that they're seeking clarification. There should be no sideline conversations occurring with an interpreter. And if you don't want the information to be interpreted, then I would say do not utter the comment because an interpreter is bound to interpret everything that is spoken or signed within the room. And if they don't understand that, then that is the only time they seek clarification, which may happen. Interpreters sometimes do ask for a pause. They may need to unpack something to do some cultural bridging in order that the deaf participant understand. Or there may be a term used by the medical practitioner that the interpreter isn't familiar with and may need to understand conceptually what that term means in order to interpret the information accurately into the second language. I think too it's really important to recognise that if um, interpreters or professional interpreters aren't engaged and there is some confusion um, in the post-operative treatment or the discharge information, then potentially the service provider could be liable. Um, so it's always important, I think, to get interpreters wherever possible. And even if there isn't an interpreter available locally, for Auslan interpreters, you can also get them via video remote interpreting, so through video conferencing, as long as you have a device within the hospital that will support that and that there is an internet connection strong enough with a fast upload download in order to accommodate the rapid um, use of sign language in terms of the pixelation.